Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Waters. We do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can get hold of Tim every trading day. He has a great newsletter. And the way you get hold of him, you go to odd-oracle.com. That's odd-oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, it's, it's, there's a, not a whole lot going on here, but we can kind of take a look uh, on the bigger picture real quick. If you, Absolutely. You know, Start uh, start with chart one. Okay. And nothing real dramatic here. The only thing I want to point out: the second window up from the bottom. Okay. Is the uh, uh, S is the uh, this is a weekly chart? Yeah, this is a weekly chart of the SPX VIX ratio. Yes. And I I got uh you know the the shaded area of green in there are times when the um, S and P actually was making lower highs and that ratio was making higher highs. Well, the ratio was making higher highs, and since then, the, the uh, SPX also made a higher high. But the, my point is, there's no divergence here right. where the SPs are making higher highs and this ratio is making lower highs. So, uh, bigger trend is up, not saying this week's going to be an up week, but uh, intermediate term-wise, it looks just fine. So, uh, you know, and plus, we, we, uh, this week, we're going into a... A three-day holiday. Yes. Memorial Day is Monday. A lot of times the volume kind of drops out, so you don't have energy either up or down. And that's kind of what's happening here. If you notice, volume really dropped off yesterday compared to the you know Friday and last week. And uh, today's volume will be lucky to even test to get to yesterday's I volume. I know. So, yeah, I know. Uh, I was going to ask you about that because it's really tough up here, man. Do you know what I mean? It's like, okay, we know that the price is still there, Tim, right? I mean, you know, but like, it's like, okay, you get a contraction, you know, and of course the NASDAQ, that finished at a high yesterday and then that just went to, it's trying to test that high as we're speaking right now. But I, I know, right, what you're saying, because it's like, okay, man, you have four days in a row, but I remember what you also taught me years ago that the longer that you stay at highs and go sideways, the higher you can go. So it's like, okay, man, what are we going to do here? That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. So, but you know, there's a lot of nothing. Let's go to chart two, kind of look at a, okay. another bigger picture here. Yep. Um, uh, well, anyhow, the, the second window up from the bottom, this is a daily chart, and this is VIX. And the only thing I want to point out there, VIX is actually, you know, like on the first chart, but the VIX is actually hitting a lower low than the previous high on the SPYs, even though the SPYs are higher than it was back in late March, early April, which is that red circle on the uh, uh, top chart there. Okay. The uh, the VIX is actually lower than it is. So that's, that's a real good sign. If VIX stays low as the market rallies higher, normally that's a really good sign. What you have to worry when the SPs are going up and the VIX starts going up with it. Yes. That's when you got to worry. And we, you know, we we kind of gone sideways here, but we're not seeing any big increase in the VIX. Uh, so it's it's staying low. Um, so there's really nothing to worry about. And if you look at yesterday's volume compared to, uh, which I didn't draw it on this chart, I wish I did, but yesterday's volume is lighter than the previous high of last Thursday. So you're you're. You tested yesterday a previous high, which is last Thursday, and volume was significantly lower. Right. So that implies resistance to the upside. The market didn't have energy to break through last Thursday's high. Yes. So we're trying to rally here a little bit, and uh, and and we may test today yesterday's high, but volume looks like to me probably won't get back to yesterday's high. We got 20 minutes to go in the market. And volume right now looks like like about half it was yesterday, so I still think we're probably going to go back down and and test uh, last what last Wednesday's gap. That's what I'm thinking we're going to do because we just don't have the energy to really push higher this week. So well, yeah. I'm thinking we're just, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Go. Uh, so I, I'm thinking I don't think we have the energy just to push higher this week because energy is volume. If you don't have volume, you don't have energy. Sure. So I'm thinking we're just going to mess around here. And Tim, I just put a yeah. VIX chart up, right? And it's pretty amazing. I mean, we're at the bottom of the, the range here. I mean, we're at 11.99 right now, and you have to go all the way back to 2018 to get 11.81. <laughs> so it's like, okay, man, you know. And then what did happen here, folks, okay, after that 11.81, 
you know, it, it crept up, and then that's when that thing went up to 85. <laughs> that was yeah. the, the downdraft of, uh, what, 2020. But anyway, I uh, thought this was like, okay, if, we, if we're going to continue higher at this point, well, that means that that VIX is going to break all, not all lows, but, uh, you know, it was like, okay, the bottom yeah. is... It, it only, it's, you know, it can't go, it's not going to go to zero, right. you know, what's, how low is low. You know, sometimes when it's this low, the market keeps going up and the VIX kind of just goes sideways. And, uh, but if, if it's around, you know, 15 to 20, you know, going sideways actually could be bearish because it's already high. Sure. You know, because VIX is, is a, it's kind of an option thing. You know, that's how the VIX gets its price through yes. option premiums and disc or premiums on the, the puts compared to the calls. Yes. So uh, so right now, smart money is not betting on the short side. I'll put it that way. That's right. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 85. NASDAQ's up 32. S&Ps are up 13. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Boyd, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and our problem with us out here. We have the Dow up 57. NASDAQ's up 26. S&Ps are up 10. And we just hit a new high inside of the NDX 100. It spiked it, pulled back a little. S&P hasn't done that yet, but we'll see where that ba baby goes. And we're talking with Tim, and the chart we have up, I have the second chart up, Tim. Yeah, another thing I want to point out that I pointed uh, arrows there. Actually, I said nine days up in a row. Yes. Actually, it was 10 days up in a row, which I didn't have, never. I had seven days up in a row, which is, I think, 83% of the time the market's higher within five days and it was at like one and a half percent okay i don't have anything higher than that eight or nine or ten days but the probability is you get that much momentum up in that many days in a row put it this way it's never the final high so i'm thinking there's, yes i don't know a high percentage chance i'm talking probably in the 90s that this market will be higher probably within a week of, of, of now. So sometime next week, I bet we, we start hitting new highs again, especially with the VIX this low and it's not coming up. So I'm thinking this is market just building energy. This is a typical consolidation, uh, you know, a sideways move before the you know market starts up again. So my opinion, I think the sideways consolidation that may last the rest of this week is probably the halfway move of the next move up. Oh, like baby. ABC. Yeah, well, and I think it is. And so I'm thinking there's there's quite a bit more to come. Yes, and time wise, this is this would be one. I mean, you know, we have window dressing that starts about ten days from now. Um, you know, and just as you said, we have the holiday. Well, we get three. Yeah, you only have six trade, uh, seven trading days before window dressing starts because we close Monday. Which, yeah, I can see that. You know what I mean? Because what yeah. does happen, folks? You got to remember something. You know, on. The, the window dressing deal, it's the IRA money that comes in, folks, okay? People get so much money taken out of their paychecks. The bottom line is it comes into the market. The money managers do not get paid unless they put that money to work in the market. They don't get paid on cash. So the bottom line is, is that that comes in and, you know, bottom line, that's why you know, not all the time, but most of the time at the beginning of the month is a positive for the market. That's what it comes down to. So, Yeah. So okay. No. Out. Chat three. I want to point out. Also, uh, another thing: when the rally starts off, this this um, angle up, I guess you might say how it, how yes. steep it is. Yeah. If the market starts out that way; it actually continues that way. Yeah. That's, so, uh, that's, so they, there's there's going to be a, as a, a big acceleration coming off the uh, what April low as probably the next rally up. So it doesn't like change direction. It right. starts off at the bottom. That direction continues straight up. That's the reason why those parallel lines, those channel lines work oh, yeah. uh, so well, because once you start off that way, uh, that continues that way. And so, you, yeah. you, you, you can see it. That's exactly what we've done. You had the first leg up inside the, the spy that we started out at four. Yeah, we started out at 409, went straight all the way up to 524. We pulled back, what, four weeks ago to 493, and now we get a straight line move again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is about so, as straight as you can get, too, for the market, man. That first move is insane. And if we get the second yeah. move, I think we're going to be retiring. No. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be pretty good. So let's, let's go look at the gold market real quick. Okay. This is, I think it's still pretty kind of interesting. Um, chart three. I have it up. Yep. 
Yeah, we looked at this chart before, and I'm kind of keeping track of the bottom chart, which is the monthly XAU gold ratio. Okay. The only reason I like this ratio, you can see the gold stocks really outperformed since 1996. You know, because this ratio has been going down. In other words, gold has been outperforming gold stocks yes. since 1996 because because this ratio is going down. When the ratio is going up, that means gold stocks are outperforming gold. So, you know, since 1996, even though we did have a wow a big bump in 2000 to 2006 or seven, yes, uh, uh, gold stocks really went up. But but gold outperformed, or gold really went up. You know, that's when gold was like 200, went to 1,000, or I yep. forgot what it was. That's right, it went, went from 252 up. to 11 something, right? 1106 or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. So gold stocks did well, but, uh, you know, gold. So I'm thinking this time around we're going to change that. Because, you know, if you look at the bottom window, which is the XDU gold ratio, it hasn't done anything since 2016. Pretty much gone sideways here. And so now we're running into long-term trend line, and we've kind of been going down since 2021. Uh, and gold stocks just been in really a, a dismal place. So I'm starting to see, a lot, uh, I do Bollinger Bands on a lot of gold stocks on the monthly time frame. And a lot of these gold stocks are starting to bump above the monthly mid-Bollinger Band. And so it's, it's not the, you know, the weekly, daily, but the monthly. So once the monthlies pop up, you're talking multi-month. It's not even a multi or even a multi-year rally is coming on some of these gold stocks. So they're not going to be a, a pop up for two, three months, go right back down again. I think they're they're going to be lasting. And these charts kind of give that a different view. The the second window up from the the second window down from the top. Is the monthly inflation deflation ratio? Yes, and it's also up against the major trend line, and we're right at it. Um, I think I have a chart. Yeah, flip to chart four. Okay, you know it's amazing. Can I just stay in this one for a second? What's amazing is that on, on the bottom chart, Tim, with that trend line, uh -huh. just so you can get some perspective, folks. As as Tim was saying, that even though we had a run that was extraordinary, that it never broke that trend line. But let me give you an idea of the run. The run, like an eco eagle. You know, and a lot of these went. They were ten beggars. They went from six dollars to to eighty four dollars, and it still didn't break the line. So this is really cool, yeah. man. I mean, and what does happen is, yeah, it's the length of time coming across, but that's pretty intense, man. They didn't get a ten bagger, still hasn't broken the line. Where in this particular case, we're very close to breaking that, man. And that yeah. was, you know, if, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, I got another chart. I don't think I have it with me, uh, or uh, I didn't. Uh, that's okay. To you, but we're actually above that line. That line's really point six. Oh, point oh six. We're point oh six two right now, and you can't quite see what's going on. Okay, but we're just barely above the line. But what, the month's not over yet. This is a monthly chart, right? But we're actually uh, just a smidge above that line right now. So if the market stays here or even rallies, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're breaking that line on the monthly chart because monthly you really got to go by the close. Yes, and we got to. You know, I'm a week and a half, two weeks to go before that closes. So I'm thinking we're we're breaking it, uh, my opinion. But yeah, you know, we don't have a lot of time here. Chart chart four. I have it up. Go ahead. All right. Chart four is the top or the second window down from the top of chart three. So that's an inflation deflation ratio. So you can see where we are on that line. There is that blue line I got drawn. Yes. Which is, uh, the top window, we're smack on it right now. Yes, we so, are. So wow. you got the inflation deflation ratio, most likely going to break this line, and probably the XAU gold ratio right now is breaking it, but the month's not over yet. So uh, two di two different types of indicators, both of them are kind of saying the same thing. So th I think this this gold market is going to have legs, and I'm not going to talk about you know a couple of weak legs. I think we're we're doing multi month if. It's not even longer. And this thing took a while to develop because we were talking last summer about getting these buy signals and they go up, they come right back down. Yes. They really didn't give a sell signal. They just kind of kept, actually kept giving buy signals. And finally, we're to a point right now that, uh, you know, the whole thing's flipping bullish here. So, yeah, I hear the music. Yeah, stay right there. Tim and I come right back. Stay right there, folks. Dow's up 55, NASDAQ up 23, S&P's up 9. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oitomo, Ryan. 
So, Tim, I'm on uh, number four right now. Where should I go? Yeah, we have to go to five. Okay. I do have that chart. There we go. Okay. The middle window is the uh, monthly XAU gold ratio. We're talking about, you know, that little area down at the bottom. I the, see it. You, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that that trend line goes back to 1996. Wow. So... And so we're, you know, if you can tell right there, we're actually above that trend line. Yep, you got a nose and above it. Yep, the Kentucky Derby. Here we go. I like it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it, so it needs to hold here or close above here. And if you notice, uh, since 2021, uh, the XAU gold ratio has been hugging that trend line. Yes. So the market knows you know, where it is, what wow. that trend line means. So I thought that was really... It's so know, intriguing, isn't it? How that's going to break it or... I don't know, but I think you see acceleration of this ratio, XAU gold ratio, going higher because it's been really choppy and unpredictable over the last couple of years, and it's due for a trend, you know, other than chop, chop, chop. So I'm thinking, uh, and that's what I'm looking at a lot of these different gold stocks. I, I'm thinking they're going to start, uh, you know, basically going into an impulse wave, I guess. That's what so it looks I like. Gonna... No, I, I I can see what you're saying, man. And particularly, let me ask you something. See how that that they are coming. Up? What could I know when we go sideways? Yeah, that's building cause higher or lower. Okay, but this would this almost be building cause? It's almost like you, you pump up against it. You come back down with lighter volume. Go up with volume. Back down with lighter volume. Do you know what I mean? It's like okay, over the course yeah, of years. I think it's a, I'm thinking this whole thing's building cause. Yeah. In my opinion, going back to 2014. Wow. Okay. You know, that's if, if if you notice, we really didn't. We haven't moved anywhere. I know. Relatively speaking, for the since two thousand, you know, yep. fourteen. I mean, it's gone up, gone down. Yes. And we did have, and some of those rallies in there, those gold stocks did get, you know, back in two thousand sixteen. If you look at a lot of gold stocks, they did uh, ten timers. Same with uh, two thousand. Uh, well, the next one, 2019, a lot of 10 timers in there. Yep. So I'm thinking right. there's going to be a bunch of 10 timers coming. It's a beautiful Fine. thing. Tim, yeah, thank you absolutely. so much. You have a great one, safe one. Look forward to speaking to you on Thursday. All right. Love you guys. Love you, man. Take care.